Hey guys, Bill Winkleman here with the Erie County Catfish Club. Wanted to give a big thank you for everybody's continued support. Our sponsors, A. Kaplan and Sons out in Waterford, MagicBait.com, Mid-Atlantic Stocking, the Embroidery Shop. You guys are absolutely great and we've gotten such good response for people who realize and see exactly what we're trying to do here for the community. We are not just a catfish club and what we do is we are a fishing club. We do enjoy fishing for catfish but we do fish for all species of fish. Our biggest thing that we're doing is the conservation effort as well as doing a lot of programs and that for the youth to help and educate them and to get them out fishing. Our conservation effort, we've targeted Lake LaBeouf as our primary target for uh, the restocking program. Um, we will be restocking a lot of different species of fish into Lake LaBeouf. Um, we're hoping that it will, we can conclude it in about four to ten years. But we need the help and the support of viewers like you and the community. We have some upcoming events. Uh, sponsored and hosted by magicbait.com and the Erie County Catfish Club. We're going to be doing some fishing derbies for the kids ages 6 to 15 and they're going to be on the last Saturday of each month starting in April all the way through September. Each kid is going to get door prizes, food, drink, and they're also going to be eligible for other prizes and there's going to be some raffles. I don't want to give too much detail away, but the grand prize for the raffle is a brand new rod and reel, plus some other really nice stuff the kids are going to love. Cost is $10 per kid. You can go ahead and go to our website and everything is right online. You can go ahead and reserve your spot because it's the first come first serve and it's only nine kids per derby event and it's going to be located right at Lake LaBeouf located in Waterford, Pennsylvania. Furthermore, it's going to be 10 in the morning until noon. It's only going to be a two hour event. So get the kids involved, get them out, get them fishing. The reason we all enjoy fishing as much as we do is because we got our parents got us involved in fishing. If we don't get our kids involved in fishing now, they're not going to have the same enjoyment and pleasure as we did and we still have to this day. We just wrapped up last week's first week's contest. Daryl Grimes of Erie, Pennsylvania was uh, last week's winner. Congratulations, Daryl. Hope you enjoy the products and that from Magic Bait as they are sponsoring the uh, contest. It's not too late, guys. There's still four weeks left in the event. Go ahead, go to the website, go to the Facebook page, become a member, enter, get your name in, get your wife's name in, get your kids' name in. Everybody has a chance to win, and you're entered into each week's contest until you win or the contest ends. No limit on how many could win in a household. So keep that in mind, guys. We're really pushing to get everybody involved, and we want to make it great, again, for everybody. Today, I got a nice little treat. We're going to do a review on the Hummingbird Fish Finder 561 Dual Sonar. Um, I haven't found any reviews online of this particular model yet, so we're going to make sure we get one on there today. So stay, stay with us, stay tuned, and don't go anywhere. Okay guys, here it is. This is the Hummingbird 561 Dual Sonar Review. I spent a good many months looking at a lot of different hummingbirds, a lot of different fish finders from other brands, uh, trying to find one that I really, really liked. I liked how the sonar worked, and ultimately I ended up choosing the 561. What I like about it is it's very simple to use. Right now it's just in um, simulation mode so you can get an idea. You can uh, tinker with everything and kind of get an idea how everything works and why it works. Um, for example you can sit here and you can see the fish here on the sonar 
and let me go ahead and adjust the contrast so you guys could see it a little bit better and let me brighten it up a little bit too okay yeah you guys can see it a little bit better yeah um, it'll show uh, contours in the bottom um, depending on the darkness and the lightness it will kind of give you an idea of the bottom what it's what it's consistent of um, at the top here you can see that there is some uh, water uh, turbulence it does show that it could be seaweed um, it displays the fish um, by three different sizes small medium and large uh, be aware that small and sometimes medium could be small or large schools of fish so what could be showing up as a small fish or a medium fish could in fact end up being just a large school of fish um, so you want to kind of keep that in mind you can go in here and let me find it here you got the you can adjust the adept alarm the fish ID alarm you got low battery you got your temperature alarm your alarm tone timer you can start your timer and everything on here let me go over here to another how the sonar works you can adjust the sonar to um, single beam dual beam or one of the uh, other beams there um, if you're going to use the dual beam we'll get into that here shortly uh, you can adjust how much surface clutter you want to have displayed uh, your fish ID your fish ID sensitivity you know a lot of nice nice features here you can uh, really go through all this and kind of just experiment a lot with it you got your fish ID which you can turn on or off fish ID alarm on um, this is a nice little feature here you can set it as you can hear it going off uh, it's displaying three fish small medium and large so every time a small medium or large fish is picked up on the sonar it's going to send out an audio alert all right now you can adjust this to where you're only detecting medium and large and you can detect it to where you only detect large fish so the sonar will only audio alert you when it picks up a large fish like it's doing currently right now um, this is a real nice idea um, how you can experiment with this get a real good feel for it before you take it out there on the water and proceed to try to figure everything out there you know uh, your battery alarm uh, when your battery gets down to a certain uh, amp it'll uh, send off a little audio alarm letting you know your your battery starting to get low however you want to have it set at um, your temperature alarm um, that is the uh, water temperature um, I you know I don't think you really need to worry about it too much unless you're um, trying to scour an area for a particular fish it's going to be into a warmer or possibly a colder body of water within the uh, lake and you got your you can adjust your alarm tone and then timer setup at uh, basically uh, the timer setup is uh, it's there you can uh, start the timer um, that way uh, let's say you want to go to a certain area you find an area you want to start fishing there you can turn the timer on and the timer will go off let's say you set it for 20 minutes it'll go off to let you know you only, you know because you only wanted to spend 20 minutes in that area so and then here's the beam select now because this is a dual beam all right how this sonar here particularly works is um, if you're running one beam okay your 83 uh, kilohertz beam 
is a straight down at the back at the back of the boat or wherever you uh, put your trans uh, your transducer. It goes down in a 20 degree radius in a cone shape. All right, and the second beam is a 60 degree radius in a cone shape that shoots straight down from the transducer. You can select either of those types of beams or you can do both beams. Now, let me show you. The, uh, if you notice, the fish are now no longer uh, hollowed. They're darkened fish. That's letting you know that those fish are in that particular cone radius. Now, we switch it over to both. You can now see that there are, it's going to show hollow fish and it's going to show light fish. Depending on which beam is picking them up is going to tell you exactly where those fish are, which is a really nice feature if you run the dual um, because it can tell you if it's in that narrow 20 degree band that would be the closest to your boat on the back or it's going to tell you if it's more in the 60 degree area on your boat too. So, you know, you want to, you know, experiment with it a little bit, guys. Get a feel for it, you know, what you feel the most comfortable with. Um, let me get out of the menu here. And you can see it, it shows your depth up here, um, your temperature. Down here, it's going to show your uh, traveling speed. And then here along the side, it shows the depth. And this will adjust accordingly as you find different areas of water. You can see here now it dropped all the way down and showing down to 30. Now it's going to show a 20 degree area or 20 foot uh, area. So, you know, depending on how deep it is, this does go to a depth of 100 feet. Um, so you're, you're in good shape. You don't have to worry about, you know, oh, I might, I might be in too deep of water. Uh, up here at the top here, we got the uh, view button, and you can change your view, as you can see, which also some will adjust uh, what is being displayed. Okay. Now, this here is a split screen. It's showing the sonar uh, on the left is showing the one sonar beam, and the one on the right is showing the other sonar beam. So you kind of get an idea um, how that's working exactly. And then here, you you know, you can have a little bit better idea and that. And then we go back to this. This is the view that I prefer and I will actually be using. Um, it displays um, both beams, the narrow and the uh, wider beam, in one view. And then all you have to do is make sure that you remember the darkened beams or the darkened fish are for this particular beam sonar and the, the hollowed fish are for the other beam and that'll really let you know exactly where to find the fish and then of course as you can see on the fish itself it tells you approximate depth of where that fish is you know so you can drop your line accordingly and uh, start reeling some fish in now there's a lot of uh, fish finders out there on the market guys and you know there's almost no right and wrong choice it all depends on what you're looking to do with your fish finder and what you want your fish finder to do for you um, like I said I spent a good two three months um, reviewing you know probably close to 30 different fish finders that I was looking at I was looking at a uh, portable uh, I was looking at handheld portable and then of course I was looking at these particular models here now this does not have the the GPS tracking and you know plot coursing and all that you know stuff on here I don't really need that on uh, the particular boat that I'm going to be using it on. I got a 12 foot aluminum and I don't I don't I don't need all that fancy stuff on mine I just need a real good fish finder that's going to tell me exactly where the fish are and you know, a, 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 give you a, a better opportunity to try and catch some fish. Um, there's nothing worse than being out there on the lake and casting your line and you have absolutely no idea if there's any fish right there in that water. Um, 
So again, you know, guys, take the time, be choosy. Don't be in a rush to immediately go get a fish finder. Not all fish finders are the same, and not all fish finders work the same. Each fish finder uh, sonar beam is different, um, and they do work differently. Some have a narrow beam, and some have a cone beam. Um, you know, and some have dual beams. You know, it, it's a big, big um, decision you got to make. And you don't want to also break the bank either. Uh, this uh, particular model here, I got for you know about 200 bucks. Um, I ordered it online. I had it shipped, and you know I'm very pleased with uh, this particular model. Um, I have not had it out on the water yet, as you know we still got ice on the uh, lakes. So I uh, can't wait to get out there on the water. And I'll do another sh video at that point in time, show you exactly how well this thing works. And that'll wrap up this review for the Hummingbird 561 dual beam sonar, guys. Um, I highly recommend this product. Um, it's a very good sonar. Um, and you guys can uh, make your decision up on that. For me, it would have been nice if somebody had done a review on this particular one before I had bought it. Unfortunately, nobody did, so hence why I am now doing it. However, the biggest nightmare, you know, when it comes to making the decision is all the reviews you have to do. you got to find that right fish finder. So, keep the lines tight, guys, and keep fishing. All right, guys, that concludes this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, love to hear some feedback from you guys. You want to see... Uh, a particular product up for review drop me a line let me know what you'd like to see and we'll see if we can't have that happen in an upcoming show remember guys the ice is getting thinner the air's getting warmer so be safe when you're out there on the ice and as always guys keep the lines tight keep fishing <laughs>